In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use the Google Rich Card for Recipes widget. With the Google Rich Card widgets, there are two things that are extremely important. The first is that the content inside the widget should match exactly what is on the page. And the second is that the markup should always be verified, and I will show you how to do that at the end of this video. The reason why these two things are so important with the Google Rich Cards because the content in this widget can affect the way that search results are displayed in a way that other SEO cannot do. So if you use it correctly, it can be pretty awesome, but if you use it incorrectly or abusively, Google is not going to like you. So I made a page about a recipe that I found, but I'm going to ignore that for now and just focus on the content of the widget. So I'm going to skip the first two toggle options, and I'm going to start with general, but I will get back to these once I get down to their corresponding section. So inside general, the name is just the name of the recipe. Author is the person who created or wrote the recipe. Image is an image of what the final product will look like. The description should just be a quick and appealing description of whatever the recipe creates. Alright, now if that is all the information that you want to enter for the widget, then that is technically all the information that you need to enter for the Google Rich Card to validate. And I'm telling you this because if there's any part of the recipe that you don't know, that's okay because you don't need to enter information into every section. However, I do recommend that you add as much as possible. So next, inside general, we have servings and yield. Um, just toggle this on to add the amount of servings that the recipe will create. Then under time, you have prep and total time. So the prep time is the amount of time that it's going to take to prepare to be able to create the recipe, hence prep time. So toggle that on if you want to add that feature. And then the total time is the amount of time that it's going to take to complete the recipe. Alright, so next we have ingredients. To be able to add an ingredient, all you have to do is toggle the switch on, and then you add the ingredient, and then you just toggle the next one on, and then you continue doing that to add as many ingredients as you need. You're able to add up to 20 ingredients inside this section, but if you need more, just let me know by going down to the Features and Bugs section. Then if you just click right here where it says click here to request a new feature, then right here just let me know how many ingredients you're needing to be able to add to the widget and I will make sure to add that to the widget and then send an update out. Updates are always free, by the way. So next we have instructions, and in instructions, you're able to add up to 15 steps. And again, same process for the ingredients. If you're needing to add more instructions, then just go through the same thing that I just said for ingredients. To be able to add in a step, or an instruction step, just click add a step and then enter whatever the instruction is for that step and then continue going down as you add more steps. So next is reviews. To be able to add reviews you have to toggle the feature on up here and if you want to add this feature you're going to want to make sure that there's a link on your page that goes to where the actual reviews are located. If you're just making the reviews up you're not going to want to do that because it's possible that first the reviews will be ignored or the entire Google Rich Card will just be overlooked. So make sure that if you use this feature that you're providing a link to where the reviews are actually located. So if you toggle that on, first you have the average. That's just the average review that was received for the recipe. Then the best possible is the um, best possible score someone could have received. So if it's based on 1 to 5 stars, 1 to 10 stars, or uh, 1 to 100 stars, that's where you enter the best possible. Then the worst possible is almost always going to be 1. That's just the worst possible score that someone could give for a review. Then the count is the amount of people that gave a review for that recipe. And the last section is nutrition. So to be able to add information to the nutrition section, just toggle the feature on. Then the nutrition section is specific measurements of specific nutritional values. So first you have add serving size. And since I already specified the amount of servings that this recipe would create, the serving size description would just be one slice of cake. So the serving size should just explain what you are basing the following measurements off of. 
and then the rest is just the specific nutritional values. So you have calories, carbs, cholesterol, fiber, protein, sodium, sugar, fat, trans fat, and saturated fat. And if I am missing any nutritional values, then just let me know again by opening up the features and bugs and clicking request a new feature. And then just let me know which nutritional value you're wanting to be able to add. So I'm actually just going to toggle all of these on so you can see what it looks like when you run this widget through Google's Schema Checker. So I've toggled everything on and now I'm just going to upload my site. And I just realized that I forgot to add a link to the schema checker inside the widget, so I will add that and then send out an update. But if you are for some reason using the widget and it doesn't have that link, all you have to do is do a quick search for uh, Google schema checker. Or, and then you're going to pull up a structured data testing tool. I guess that would be a better thing to search for. But you copy the URL of whatever page has the schema markup on it and go to the structured data testing tool and then just paste the URL and click run test. So if everything works okay you won't see any errors. You might see a few warnings with Google recommending that you add more information but you don't have to add things that Google's recommending. It obviously is just recommended. Alright so if you scroll down you can see all of the awesome features that the widget added. So it added all the content from the widget and added it all right into here. And what's extremely cool about the recipe Google Rich Card, and I'm sure that they'll start doing this for the other Google Rich Cards, but for the recipe one, it has this preview link. And if you click preview, it shows you a preview of what your recipe is going to look like inside search results. One more quick thing. Your image is not going to show up if Google hasn't already indexed the image that you'd be using for your recipe. If it's been indexed, then it will show up, but if it doesn't show up, it doesn't mean that it's not working. Alright, well that is it for the Google Rich Card for Recipes widget.